Hi there, it's Bill Peterson, aka The White Tornado, here for Geek Funk Labs with the second in my series of lesson videos on using Fluid Patcher, the cross-platform synthesizer interface that runs the Squishbox and the Headless Raspberry Pi synthesizer. In this video, I'll explain the main configuration file for Fluid Patcher, as well as how to control the built-in chorus and reverb effects of Fluid Synth. As in the last lesson, I'll be using the desktop version of Fluid Patcher, with a MIDI keyboard plugged into my Windows PC. If you go to the Tools menu and choose Settings, you can see the main config file for Fluid Patcher. The caption of this window shows where it's stored on your computer. You can see the corresponding config file for the Squishbox or Headless Pi either by logging in with a remote terminal, or by using the browser-based file manager if you chose to install it during the setup process. If you go to the GitHub page for Fluid Patcher, which you can find down in the video description, and visit the wiki and go to the config files section, you can find an explanation of the format of these files. As you can see, the config file stores the location of files that Fluid Patcher needs, like sound fonts, your bank files, MIDI files, uh, plugin files. It also stores the last bank file that you use so that this is persistent for the next time you load the program or restart your device. This file also contains Fluid settings, which are values that are sent directly to Fluid Synth, which is the core synthesizer engine that Fluid Patcher is built around. A full list of the settings you can use is maintained at this link here, which is also down in the video description. This page explains the meaning of each setting, as well as what the allowed values and defaults are. For the most part, you should not need to modify this file, especially the file locations and current bank values. You can experiment with different fluid settings if you want to do things like use a different audio driver, or tweak the quality or latency of your audio setup. These two blocks show you some performance tweaked fluid settings for specific systems. Only the block with the exact name Fluid Settings gets used, so if you want to use one of these alternative setups, you can just copy its contents into the Fluid Settings block. However, for now, we'll just use the standard settings, which should work on most platforms. When you click OK, the configuration file is saved. As this warning tells us, many of the settings we might have just modified control how the synthesizer is set up, so we might have to restart the program for them to take effect. You can also use Fluid Settings in a bank file. If we look near the bottom of this list on the Fluid Settings page, we can see some settings for the chorus and reverb effects of the synth. This note tells us that these settings can be changed during the runtime of the synthesizer, which means that they can be used in our bank files after the synthesizer has been started. Let me create a new bank file to show you how this works. I'll start by just adding a few sounds using the Choose Preset tool as I did in the last lesson. That's what they all sound like. Now, let's put a bigger reverb on these sounds by changing the fluid setting. We'll start by creating a fluid settings item that's at the main indent level in the bank. This means that these settings will affect all the patches in the bank. Now let's increase the reverb room size. The fluid settings page says we can have a range of 0 to 1, so we'll just go for the maximum. I'll apply those changes to the bank file, and now we can hear the reverb is much bigger. Also, make sure you note what type of value the setting should be. Room size should be a floating point or decimal number, so if you use an integer, it'll be ignored. If you want to create a setting for a specific patch, you can create a fluid settings item within the patch by indenting to the same level. For example, let's say you feel like the Rhodes piano sounds better without all this huge reverb. We'll add a fluid setting to the Rhodes piano patch that reduces the reverb room size down to a lower level. Now when I apply, you can hear that that big reverb is being applied to the other two patches but not the roads. What happens is that each time a patch is selected, the bank level fluid settings get set first, and then the settings in the individual patch. Fluid settings also don't automatically revert back to anything when you change patches. Let me show you what I mean. Let's add a chorus setting to this Legend Electric Piano patch. Now when I apply the changes to the bank, 
We can hear the Rhodes piano sounds the same as it did before. Now if I switch to the legend, we hear the change to the speed of the chorus effect. But if I switch back to the Rhodes piano, we hear the same increased chorus speed there as well. That's because there's no fluid setting changing it back to the lower value. One way to fix this would be to add a chorus speed setting to all the patches. But that can get inefficient, so the easy way is just to add it to the bank level fluid settings. You can also put these effects related fluid settings into the config file for Fluid Patcher. These types of settings will get applied each time a bank is loaded, so they have the effect of changing the default values of these parameters. For example, you might want that big reverb to be the default effect on all of your bank files. Another setting that might make sense is the synth.gain setting. The default value for this is 0.2, but you might find that this isn't loud enough for your audio setup. Now if we change this value here, it will only get applied when we reload the bank. So let's go ahead and save the file. And when we reload, it sounds noticeably louder. This lesson should have taught you how to use your configuration file and how to experiment with fluid settings and effects parameters. We're just getting started, so stay tuned for more and stay funky.